my name is Jake, and the channel you're watching, 787 Dude Who Loves Planes, is all about um, aviation and stuff linked to planes. And as you can see behind me, I've got my poster, and today is the video that I will be labelling the instruments of um, a Boeing cockpit, even though, well, cockpits are the same in a different other planes as well. Also in today's video, um, I, I think I figured out um, what plane this is on, just by looking at the camera here. Obviously I know it's the Boeing because of the yoke. Um, so yeah, let's get into the video and more of the telling you why I think it's a certain plane later. Okay, so I'll tell you what plane I think it is later, but for now, um, I'll just focus on behind me. Um, yeah, so, uh, where should we start? I'll start at the bottom, actually. <coughs> okay, alright, so, here is the... Yoke, actually, just give me a second. Okay, so we'll start down here, like I said. Okay, so I'll start in the middle and work away to the sides. I mean, they are kind of the same on both sides. Okay, so here um, is you should be able to clearly see, I can see, oh yeah, flap, so you can see that's the flap, also a cool feature that actually has on it, is that you can't really see it, like here, but if you're ever in a cockpit, or ever look at pictures of a cockpit, you'll see that the flap um, lever is actually in the shape of a flap, this is because, um, like, if the cockpit got smoky, um, and you just couldn't see, or any reason like that, um, you can feel that the flaps are there because of the shape of it. Because it's a key part of landing a plane, is the flaps. You can't really land a plane without the flaps or the gear. And the gear also has another cool feature. If you can guess what it is, 100% credit to you. Okay, so here, you can't really see it um, a lot because where it's all, you know, because it kind of looks like it's in in your um, wall. You can't really see it a lot. But these are the throttle uh, sticks to make the engines, like, spin faster. Or spin less faster. Just how much speed really want to go. This is the speed brake, speed brake, also known as uh, spoilers. That you uh, arm them, which is just a, like a sensor will be there. So when the plane hits the ground, these will come up automatically. Um, Okay, so as you can see here is a security camera and it's just, so like the door is here, the cockpit door. It's just to check who's actually trying to come in the cockpit and it's not someone who wants to bring the plane down. Okay, so, uh, where, okay. so here is co coordinates. So, before the flight, they type in certain coordinates and that takes them to the right airport. Same with on this side. They're both the same side. Um, and then, here is a yoke. The captain's yoke, uh, to be a bit more precise. And then, yeah, it's the same on the other side, you've got the yoke. Okay, up here, 
is the time I believe. I think it's the time. Because I don't... I don't know what that is. If there's any instrument in the cockpit that I don't know what it is, I think it's that one. I assume it's the time. Um, this is... So this instrument has three things on it. It has the angle of attack. So if the plane's like that, that... Um, if it's to the side like that or to the side like that, it shows you on this side is the speed. So these control the speed, which is that. And on this side is the altitude. So as you can see, when you get into a line at the end, that is near enough your highest altitude you can go. As you see, here, it's the same on the other side. Um, okay, here is um, your waypoint instrument. So when you type these coordinates in, you get different waypoints which show up on here and it helps you glide uh, the plane down with landing and it just shows you how you need to turn and keeps you on track. Here is fuel and engine, so it tells you if they're rolling back, which means they are fail failing to fail failing to work. Um, and it just tells you how much fuel you've got left. This is the same as that, and this is the same as that. And I believe that's the time again, because they're the same. In the middle here, uh, this is landing gear. Now, I did say there's a cool feature about the landing gear lever, and that is here. This is actually a wheel, and it's, again, for the same reason as the flap. If uh, you can't see properly, um, you need uh, this to land, because otherwise your belly will be taking that hard landing at 160 knots. And there's all different words there that I can't really re read because they're just a bit too blurry. Okay, moving up. All this is like stuff to do with Not sure again. Ooh. I think this. What does it say on it? Main panel lower. Main panel lower. Give me a second. I think that would be something to do with the cabin. I'm not sure. I'm probably not right. Oh, I hadn't. I haven't really sh like studied the cockpit that much, but I know what this is and a little bit of this. <coughs> okay, so here is how high you will climb every minute. So this is set to 4,000 feet per minute. Um, uh, yeah, so this tells you how much you climb a minute. Um, where is, oh yeah, over here um, is a caution alarm. So, a, what a caution alarm is, is, wow, if there's a problem with the plane, this flashes and says, caution, no, no, sorry, so say if there was a problem with the engine, um, and it'd probably more likely be going into a stall, it would say, stall, 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 stall. 
and what a stall is is when the engines roll back and the plane is not creating a lot of thrust. Also, what's bad about a stall is that uh, the engine kind of shuts off, especially when uh, engines roll back, which means the engine filter, which is the thing inside of the engine, that the cold air around the plane, when it gets sucked into an engine, um, where it's so cold it could freeze the engine over, um, which we have seen evidence of before, um, a BA British Airway 777 crashed because of that, um, so the engine filter is a key part of the engine, um, so yeah, the engine could freeze over and um, you probably wouldn't have enough power to make the runway. <coughs> yeah, and also that would flash and just say like caution, caution, and the problem too. So I explained what this is. Um, yeah, so moving on up, as you can see, it is the uh, glass, the thick glass, um, and then up here is a hubs display, which is something that you can pull down, and it goes in front of here, and it just saves you looking down at here, it tells you what this says, so your pitch, your uh, height, and your speed. Um, yeah. Normally, pilots will sometimes have that down if they're doing you know, like a complicated landing, because it saves them taking their eye off of here to look down here to see what it is to see if they're having a good landing or not. So it can just pull down and they can still look at it and look out the other windows because I trust you now, they do look out the sides, windows, not just the front. They use all the windows as they have to look and make sure they're coming into a nice landing. Up here is a whole load of buttons and switches which I don't know what they all are but I can tell you up here was, is the APU the engine um, the lights a filter just a whole load of other things like anything you could think of that a plane needs um, I have actually turned an APU off before when I went in a cockpit of a plane the captain kindly let me turn off the APU so I believe the buttons are these two here these two I think are the APU buttons so you flip it you press it no how do you do it? Oh yeah, look, it says APU here. I can just make out APU. Yeah, so this is the place where you can turn the APU on. So you flip th those switches down. So you flip these two down, put this side off. And you flip those two down and put that side off. And I think... That is how you turn the APU off. I know these two here, you use them. <coughs> um, where are the engines? I think the engines are higher up. Um, but yeah, they're like the same switches as these with red underneath that says engine on the top. And I think, so if it came over, if it came over like that, they would be about here. So you would sit down in the seat. And so if I'm sat down, you would put your fingers up there. 
and turn them on. Um, yeah. All these switches too, um, some of them will be in case of an emergency, but this is like, what, probably like an eighth maybe, probably a bit more, maybe two eighths of how many buttons and switches are in that cockpit, because you have them here, but also behind you, on the co-pilot side, there's a whole panel of switches, buttons and lights. So there's a lot. There's a lot in a cockpit. And they probably don't, they don't use all, like, God knows how many switches. Probably, like, definitely over a couple hundred. Maybe close to 500 switches in a cockpit. That's it all together. Um, but yeah, there's a whole ton a whole lot in a cockpit they won't use them all um every flight like i said a lot some of them maybe about an eighth of them are some four emergencies just getting ready for an emergency um and just uh frequencies and yeah oh yes another thing down here i've just remembered Frequencies are all are on here too. A frequency when you're in the air, they use a special one. I forgot what it's called. It's a whole lot of numbers. Um, but yeah, frequencies all are on here, and how they speak to air traffic control is also all on there. Um, so this has actually been quite a long uh video i hope you enjoyed it um i'm not like a hundred percent on every button and every sh switch on this um but yeah that's the switches to be done now moving on to the camera the far the last part and hopefully what the funnest part of this i already have my answer but i'll take you through the process of what i how i thought i will tell you at the end okay first thing the oak so i know this is a boeing and i've been saying it a lot because of the oak i know it's a boeing because airbus used a side stick and boeing used the oak <coughs> um yeah so i know it's a boeing so that's always a good starting point now a 747 cockpit it can't be a 747 because a 747 cockpit is tinted and it's got like a cream cockpit let me show you so there's a picture up here of me in a 747 cockpit. Yeah, so that is inside a 747 cockpit. This is when I went to Disney World in America. I flew on Virgin Atlantic. Where is the plane? It was this plane here that I flew on. And this is this plane's cockpit. Okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's not a normal colour cockpit. Uh, the seats, everything here is tinted and cream colour. Um, yeah, even just like the stuff in front of you and the stuff the ceiling it's all a tinted kind of like a green uh cream color um so yeah that is how i know it is not a 747 and this was actually when i was seven nice memories actually very nice memories okay so now we know it's not a 747 
Um, after I ruled out that, I started naming the Boeing planes. You got the seven, six, seven, seven, eight, seven, triple seven, uh, seven, six, seven, seven, three, seven. You got all different range of planes. So I thought, well, this is going to be hard. I'm probably not going to get to an answer. And then I looked at the camera because I thought if I'm going to have any chance figuring what plane this is, I might as well look at the camera. And on smaller planes, if you've ever been on a smaller plane, I just went on a fairly small plane, an A320-300 and an A320-NEO. Um, you can see that the space from the boarding door, which is this door here, to the aisle, which has only one, which means it has to be a fairly small plane, is not a lot. And as you can see here, there's not a lot of space. So, that ruled me down to a few, which was the seven, um, seven, six, seven, if it has one aisle. I'm not sure how big the plane is. Um, the 757, again, how big the plane is, it depends. And the 737. Because um, I know a 787 has two aisles. Um, a 747, which is already out, has two aisles on the bottom. And the 777 has two aisles. <coughs> I thought of the 737, but um, I just wondered if the 757 and the 767 have two aisles or not. I do think they do, so I think that rules them out. So for now, I think it's the 737. I will check your 757 and 767 has one or two aisles but at the moment i think it's a 737 because it has one aisle not a lot of space around and the aisle isn't too big and there's not a lot of catering carts and actually i've just thought the 757 and the 767 are a long haul aircraft and fly long places, which means it is the 737, because all long haul aircraft for Boeing is um, a two aisle. Exceptions for the A321, that's Neo, uh, Delta does uh, Atlantic, um, Cross Atlantics with them. Uh, they have one aisle, I think. Yeah, I do believe that. Um, so, yeah, exception for one plane, but that's not Boeing. So, the 737 it is. Okay. Whew. I know that was a big video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please uh, like because I know that you appreciate my videos and they're not a waste of my time. Subscribe because that always helps me out. And share please. And make your family and friends and anyone you know about the 787 dude who loves playing this channel. Um, also give a like if you think it's the, 73, the Boeing 737 too. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Peace, enjoy the rest of your Christmas holidays.